Hey everyone, welcome back to Mike Sites, your top tier source for information in regard to the FAA Part 107 exam. If you're looking to become a certified drone pilot, well, you're in the right place because today I'm going to be giving you 10 important tips that will help you to pass the Part 107 exam with confidence. Some of the tips in this video are going to make the difference between you passing or failing. So make sure that you watch this video until the end. So without further ado, let's get into the first tip. Tip number one, understand the test format. It's important that you know the exam structure. So first thing, let's talk about what you're up against. This is the part 107 exam and it consists of 60 multiple choice questions. You will need to pass this exam with a 70% score or higher. What this means is that to achieve a 70% score on the FAA part 107 exam, you will need to correctly answer at least 42 out of 60 questions. If you do the math, that means that you can miss 18 questions and you will still pass. But listen to what I'm saying to you. If you do not study or prepare for this exam, the chances of you missing more than 18 questions makes it highly probable that you will fail. But to maintain a positive note on this video, you will pass the part 107 exam. Now you'll have about two hours to complete the test and the questions will be divided into three multiple choice answers. Now this is a good thing that there are only three instead of four because your chances of eliminating what sounds ridiculous is much greater. So you'll be able to make a definitive choice on what the correct answer will be much easier. The questions will be about topics in regard to airspace, regulations, weather, and drone operations. For me, the most challenging part of the exam were the questions that were asked that I did not prepare for enough. So the areas that you already know that you're having trouble understanding, you need to focus Focus on those areas, study more, and learn more. That takes us to tip number two, study smarter, not harder. Remember, you can get burnt out from constantly doing something with repetition over and over again consistently. So it's important that you utilize your study time wisely. Let me give you some sound advice on studying wisely and maximizing the efficiency of your information retention. One, download the free online study guides directly from the FAA website. I will put a link in my description so you can go get them. You'll have a way to highlight the topics as you go through them and you can also cross check these topics with various YouTube videos such as the ones on Mike Sites, hint, and there's so many other content creators out there with valuable information on their videos. Secondly, start using an active learning method. And what I mean is as you're studying and learning the topics, summarize them and put them in your own words. What do you think I'm doing by creating these YouTube videos? When you're able to teach someone else with your own words, that's when you have mastered the topic. And mastering the topic means you'll get a 100% score on your part 107 exam. Third, start using flashcards. Now, I don't know if you really understand how important this is for cognitive learning. You see, whenever it is that you study something and then you ask yourself the question so that you have to answer it, that's when your brain actually puts two and two together and says, I get it. So the question here is, do you get what I'm saying? Put the video on pause. Go out and buy a whole bunch of flashcards. Put the questions on those flashcards and on the back, put the answers and then test yourself to see how well you will do. This is what's called active learning. And if you follow these tips, your chances of passing the part 107 exam become much greater. Now, another thing to maximize your learning, whenever you answer one of your flashcard questions incorrectly, put those cards aside so that way you'll have a pile of cards that you did not get correctly and go ahead, study again, research and then pick those cards up and answer those questions so that way you get them correctly this time. Tip number three, master airspace and sectional charts. Now I'm gonna have one airspace video and two sectional chart videos being uploaded within this tutorial series and that's because I determined that the biggest challenges for this exam, especially for new test takers, is understanding sectional charts. The exam will ask questions for you to identify things such as controlled airspace, airport details, and special use areas. All of this information is complex and requires you to be able to have a certain level of retention. And the only way you can get that is by having accurate information and then applying learning skills appropriately. What you see visually in regard to sectional charts and also applying hands-on approach to actually solving problems and learning, this is what's going to give you a high level of proficiency when it comes to reading and understanding all of the materials in regard to sectional charts. My advice for tip number three is this, get your hands 
hands on sectional charts. Pull up sectional charts online. I will have some links in the description so you can go get them. Start staring at these sectional charts and looking at everything so that way your eyes and your brain start becoming familiar with all of the symbols that you will be asked to identify on the Part 107 exam. Practice reading them every single day. And you'll also want to pay attention to certain things such as airspace classifications and commit them to memory. Listen, if I asked you to remember three letters and I told you that at the end of the year I was going to ask you what those three letters were because I was going to give you a million dollars, I guarantee you would never forget those three letters. <laughs> tip number four, which is something that's not really mentioned too often, it is an inside tip that you will need. Bring a magnifying glass with you. The reason for this is because whether you have perfect eyesight or you're wearing glasses like me, you're going to immediately find out that the information on the sectional charts or the symbols are going to be too small to read, especially if you're in poor lighting conditions. The magnifying glass that I bought was approved by the FAA and I used that magnifying glass to gain an advantage on being able to see the information on the sectional charts and answer the questions correctly. Sectional charts have tiny details and you don't want to strain your eyes or your brain to try to figure out what those tiny small details mean. Now the question that you're asking right now is what type of magnifying glass is allowed during the FAA Part 107 exam? And I'll tell you, the FAA allows a non-electronic magnifying glass as long as it does not store information. Also, you will be able to bring a simple handheld magnifier without any additional features such as a built-in light or some sort of digital enhancement. I'll try to put a link in the description for that one also. Tip number five, weather knowledge is critical. You should know how to decode METAW and TAF reports. The questions on the exam that specifically pertain to weather are the questions that can either make or break your score. You'll need to develop the ability to read these aviation weather reports and that will allow you to answer the questions correctly so that way you can fly under safe flying conditions. Practice decoding METAW and TAF reports so you can increase your level of proficiency. Research everything you can about air density, cloud formations, and stages of thunderstorms. Weather is a very important topic on the Part 107 exam because it is interrelated to all other topics. Understand why I'm pointing to sectional charts and weather. That is because those areas are the ones where you cannot simply guess. You have to know the information. Tip number six, when you're scanning through the multiple choice answers, use what's called process of elimination. Eliminate the choices that are obviously incorrect. And a lot of times some of the exam questions will have choices that are so ridiculously wrong that even the FAA would wonder, why didn't you get that right? Think about this. If you narrow down the selection to only two options, then your chances are 50-50. Your odds are much better than if you just try to close your eyes and guess blindly. I'm giving you these recommendations because even if you don't know the answers, at least your chances will be better because you're following the correct procedures. Again, eliminate the obvious choice that is incorrect and then choose one of the two you'll have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Tip number seven, locate and identify the key words in the questions. For example, Many exam questions, not just for the Part 107 exam, but many questions will include keywords that give you clues to the correct answer. Watch for commonly used exam words such as most or least or required or accept or not. These are commonly used words and they can completely change the meaning of the question or they can provide you or point you to the correct answer answer. Let me give you an example question. Which of the following is not required for night operations? Do you notice how I emphasized the word not? Well, that emphasis is not going to be on the exam. You have to look for it and find it. The FAA will try to trick you or trip you up so that way you'll think it's one answer when it's not. If I repeat the question again, which of the following is not required for night operations? Well, the answer will always be something that is normally used when flying during the day and not necessarily when flying at night. Mm -hmm. Tip number eight, understand latitude and longitudinal coordinates. This is very important because some questions will require you to pinpoint a location on a sectional map using a latitude or longitudinal coordinate. I'm going to be uploading a detailed tutorial on latitude and longitude, but here's a pro tip that might help you. Lines of latitude are the flat lines that you see running from east to west. Lines of longitude are long lines running from north to south. 
Make sure that you're getting the notifications from my channels when I upload the videos. Tip number nine, simulate the test conditions beforehand. What you need to do is to find a quiet place and take 60 questions with you. Set a timer for either an hour and a half or two hours. Bring your magnifying glass and also bring a small calculator. The FAA allows you to use a calculator during your exam and take the test as if you're actually in the process of taking the real exam. What this will do is prepare you so then when you go to the location to take the actual exam, you won't be so nervous. It won't be your first rodeo. You've done it before. You've ridden that horse before. You know exactly what's expected. You know exactly what to bring. And the final tip is to believe in yourself. You've given your time and your energy and you've put in the work and you studied to the best of your ability. And now it's time to get certified. Stay focused, stay calm. You can pass this exam. And the key thing to remember is that passing is not just memorizing the answer. Passing means that you fully understand the material so you can apply all of the knowledge that you've acquired in the real world drone operations. So stay confident, stay prepared. You'll be able to pass this with flying colors. And until then, I'm going to have some more videos for you coming. So stay tuned to this channel. Good luck on the part 107 exam. We'll see you on the next one.